Well, it's John Weston, and here I am in uh, my Ottawa office. Uh, I'm the Member of Parliament for West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country. And I'm sitting with uh, a good friend, uh, Ed Fast, who's the Minister of International Trade and the Minister for the Asia Pacific Gateway, uh, two very key uh, ministers, ministries for uh, British Columbians. He's also the Member of Parliament for Abbotsford. He was first elected there in 2006 and then re-elected in 2008 and 2011 with stunning majorities. Uh, he uh, served on Abbotsford Council for three terms and was a school trustee there for two terms. Uh, he's married to Annette and has uh, four daughters and uh, the family lived in Abbotsford for some 30 years. So, um, Ed, we're here to, to talk about uh, one of your great accomplishments as minister. Um, it wasn't long ago that we were only dreaming about a foreign investment protection agreement. Um, before we get there, uh, why don't you um, explain why it's important for us to be doing business with China and maybe lay some of the context for that foreign investment protection agreement? Well, thanks, John. It's good to be with you uh, to talk to some of your constituents about uh, uh, the value of trade and investment to Canada's long-term prosperity. As Minister of International Trade, um, I very much understand that trade and investment are the twin engines of economic growth. And my role is to use trade to drive that economic growth and job creation within Canada. How do we do that? There are a number of ways. Um, we can promote the interests of Canadian businesses abroad through our Trade Commissioner Service. But another way we do that is by using uh, agreements like uh, free trade agreements and foreign investment promotion and protection agreements to open up new markets for Canadian businesses and exporters and also to protect Canadian investors when they invest in some of the fastest growing most dynamic markets around the world. So as we look around the world, especially the Asia Pacific Gateway, which I'm responsible for, um, these are some of the fastest growing economies in the world. Countries like China, countries like uh, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, just booming economies that we want to tap into and provide opportunities for Canadian businesses to be successful in. So that's pretty exciting for me to be able to position Canadians for long-term prosperity by tapping into new markets around the world. I practiced law in Asia for a decade and uh, was uh, based in Taiwan but did business on behalf of clients in China and throughout the region. Uh, one of the things we always saw was that Canadians were unprotected when they uh, invested in China and uh, we really longed for something that would be an umbrella to help them. I'm wondering uh, whether this agreement follows the path of other agreements that Canada signed with other countries or, or whether it's different from those. Well, we already have 14 bilateral investment treaties with countries around the world. We're presently negotiating with another 12 countries, and we'd like to uh, negotiate with even more countries. And the reason these agreements are important is Canada already has a very open uh, investment environment. In fact, we're among the most open economies in the world. So when foreign companies look to invest in Canada, they have all those protections against discrimination, against expropriation without compensation, all those important things. The problem is when Canadian companies look to invest around the world, they're often looking at high growth markets that don't provide the same kind of investment protection that Canada does. So these bilateral investment treaties that we negotiate are intended to protect Canadian companies when they make an investment in another country which doesn't have the same uh, rule of law protections um, that we offer in Canada. And so when we started negotiating an agreement with China 18 years ago, um, the whole purpose was to provide additional protection for Canadians when they invest in a country that is unpredictable, that has an opaque a regulatory and legal environment. We want to make sure that when they make those investments, that uh, if there is a dispute, that there is a very clear set of rules under which that dispute is resolved. And also as they contemplate an investment in a country like China, that those Canadian investors know what those clear rules are under which investments take place. And so this is very much about promoting job creation, both here at home and also abroad, and making sure Canadian investors are protected. 
No, uh, I really get that, and I know my clients uh, from uh, those days would have uh, uh, been very happy to know that there was some sort of international protection agreement like that. Let's move to the way the agreement was introduced in the House of Commons. Uh, I was there in the House when uh, uh, the Conservative government actually tabled this agreement. Can you tell us why that was done and, and what the impact of that was? Historically, these kinds of agreements uh, were never required to be tabled in the House of Commons. There was no opportunity to debate them, to review those agreements. Uh, the governments of the day would simply sign them, bring them into force, and that was it. When our government was elected, we actually introduced for the first time uh, the notion of tabling these treaties in Parliament. So what we do is when an agreement like this Foreign Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement with China is signed, it is then tabled in the House of Commons for a period of 21 days. Now during that 21 days, the public has a chance to review the agreement. Of course, elected members of Parliament have a chance to review it. And in fact, the opposition parties uh, are able to use their opposition days to actually debate this agreement, talk about the merits of the agreement, what is it they don't like about the agreement. And in fact, with the China Bilateral Investment Treaty, um, the opposition parties actually had four different occasions on which they could have debated the treaty. They chose not to, and that was their choice. We believe this agreement is very much in Canada's best interests and certainly will serve the long-term interest of Canadians who invest in China. It will protect their rights against dis discrimination. It will also make sure that when there are investment disputes, those disputes get resolved at the international level rather than within the Chinese domestic court system. And, and I think part of the whole communication uh, approach is what you're doing today, uh, talking about it, talking about it in the House of Commons, talking about it here, and getting members of Parliament to, to uh, reiterate your message that this isn't something totally new or unprecedented. We've done it with other countries before. We introduced it in the House. And uh, I guess the, the, the question that I've heard from, from constituents from time to time is, are we giving anything up? Uh, are we allowing the Chinese to override existing provincial or local laws that would protect our fish, protect our environment? Um, uh, is there something that we should be really worried about in this agreement? Well, first of all, I want to be very clear that things such as the environment, things such as our culture, things such as social services, health care services, are all exempt from the agreement. But what the agreement does, it protects investors on both sides of our investment relationship against discrimination. So in other words, if a Canadian company invests in China, the Chinese government cannot treat that Canadian company any less favorably than they would any other foreign uh, entity that is investing in China. It also uh, protects Canadian companies against expropriation without compensation. So if the Chinese government uh, chose to overnight uh, expropriate and take away the business of the Canadian company, under this agreement they would be obliged to provide fair and reasonable compensation. That doesn't exist right now. So when a Canadian company actually invests in China, the Chinese government decides that they want to take the business and use it for themselves. There's no guarantee that the Canadian company will actually be compensated for all of the investment that they've put into that country. And so this is very important. See, in Canada, we already respect those rights. In other words, if the Canadian government takes an asset away from a company that's invested in Canada, we compensate for that expropriation. We protect against discrimination in Canada. So whether a company is foreign or is local within Canada, we treat all of them fairly. We don't discriminate. There are other countries around the world that do discriminate. And these kinds of bilateral investment treaties make sure that we fix that problem. So that's an interesting statement. And it, it tends to make me proud as a Canadian, you know, having studied abroad and, and worked and lived in different places, what we're saying is expect to come to Canada to, to be treated fairly, expect to participate in a vibrant economy. Uh, certainly we're very blessed to have one of the strongest economies in the world today and uh, uh, our courts and our systems will treat you 
we call it most favored nation and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a national treatment, the terms that lawyers are more familiar with. But what it means is you're going to be treated fairly here in Canada, and by the way, now we're going to be treated more fairly in China. You've got that right, John. Um, you and I have both practiced law in the past. We know how important contractual sanct sanctity is. We understand that it's important that uh, trading partners uh, uh, undertake trade uh, based on a clear set of rules. And that's what this agreement does. It is a fully reciprocal agreement. There are some that have suggested this agreement is one-sided and that there's no reciprocity between Canada and China. That is not true. In fact, I would suggest to you that the big winner out of this agreement is Canada, because we've already protected investments in Canada from abroad. When a foreign company invests in Canada, once they're invested, we treat them fairly, we treat them without discrimination. We are now providing that same benefit to Canadian investors who look to China for a place to invest. We want to make sure they're also protected against discrimination and against expropriation. One thing this agreement does not do, and I want to be uh, very clear about this, this agreement does not provide any additional access to Chinese companies into Canada. This is not what's called a market access agreement. Free trade agreements are market access agreements. They improve the ability of uh, private sector partners to uh, invest in other countries or to trade with other countries. The agreement that we've signed with China is simply a non-discrimination agreement. Once someone has invested in Canada or once a Canadian company has invested in China, they're entitled to certain protections under certain rules. When there are disputes, there's a clear system of international arbitration that would apply that is respected and that would ensure that the parties have a fair hearing on the merits of their case. Action. So Minister Fast, a very interesting comment. This is not a market access agreement and I think it would be very easy to confuse the concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you um, elaborate on that and tell us will Canada still have an opportunity to review large-scale investments from uh, uh, Chinese enterprises that want to do business here in Canada? Absolutely. Uh, as you know, John, Canada has the Investment uh, Canada Act, which allows the Canadian government to review large investments, foreign investments, to ensure that they're in Canada's best interests. And that act uh, allows us to apply what's called the net benefit test. In other words, is this investment in Canada's best long-term interests? We also continue to retain our ability to review investments uh, for national security uh, reasons, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that there is no risk to our national security when a foreign company makes an investment in Canada. All those protections stay in place. What our Foreign Investment Promotion Protection Agreement with China does, it simply protects investments by Chinese companies in Canada. Once they're made, it protects them against discrimination. In other words, treating them unfairly vis-a-vis um, -vis other Canadian or foreign companies that might be doing business in Canada. The same thing holds true, holds true for Canadian companies who invest in China. They're protected against discrimination and expropriation as well. Well, I want to thank you, Minister. Um, you're one of the hardest working persons in the House, um, and your, uh, your uh, itinerary takes you all around the world these days. I also want to thank viewers, people who care enough about our country to uh, be looking at a, a video like this. Thank you for your interest in Canada and uh, for the great place that we call home. Thank you.